This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Toshiba Libretto W105, also sometimes known as the W100, since Toshiba uses different numbers to track their corporate versus consumer retail product lines. This is a very unusual laptop with two 7-inch touchscreens that are capacitive. And here we have it compared to a 12-inch tablet, the HP TM2, so you can get an idea of the size. The TM2 is a 12.1-inch capacitive multi-touch, and it also uses an EMR pen. So you can see this guy is obviously way, way smaller. And now we're comparing it to the Sony VAIO P, the 2010 model that we reviewed a couple of months ago, another incredibly small ultralight computer. This guy does not have a touch screen. It has a very high resolution single standard gloss display and a touch typable full keyboard, whereas this one uses virtual keyboards down at the bottom. We'll show you. And this runs the VAIO on the Atom CPU. You can see it's quite a bit longer to give you that full size keyboard and the widescreen display. But they're both highly portable devices. This is certainly more mainstream with a keyboard and a standard display. Okay, so let's look at the libretto itself. And first I'm going to tell you this costs $1,100. It's not cheap. And this is something that Toshiba made uh, to show up their innovation capabilities for their 25th anniversary. It's a limited edition. So once these are sold out, they may be gone. Anyway, two capacitive 7-inch screens. As you can see, they have quite a bit of glare right here. And there's a webcam built in over here, very high quality webcam. And this button over here brings up the virtual keyboard in Toshiba Utilities. This brings you back to Windows. It's the power button. And you can use it obviously in any angle from flat to normal laptop. This is the fan vent. You probably hear the fan already whizzing away. This uses a, a full Pentium CPU. This is not a Atom CPU, so this thing has very good performance for video playback and pretty much anything else you want to do. Of course, given the relatively small size of the displays, you're not going to exactly be doing a lot of video editing probably on this, but it could handle some modest video editing. Micro SD card slot up here under this plastic door. This is the top lid right here, and you can see there's two more air intake vents over here and some more here. And it's kind of an understated faux brush metal design with the chrome libretto logo. It, it looks pretty nice. It's not as flashy as the VIOP, certainly in one of the bright colors. But the interesting thing is this is the top lid of the computer as you use it in the normal computer mode. So the computer section, the motherboard and all that, is actually up top, which means you can rest this on your lap. The bottom section does not get hot and it does not require ventilation. Big beefy hinge section over here. Little feet to support it. And this is a very large battery pack. It's a 36 watt per hour, 8 cell battery according to Toshiba. And it needs it given the relatively powerful for something this size CPU. It runs for about 3.5 hours on a charge. And here's your single USB port and this is your stereo jack for headphones or speakers. And again you're probably going to want those too like the VIOP. The speaker is very quiet on this, especially once the fan gets blowing. The fan seems a little overzealous. It's not really that hot a unit, but it, it runs like crazy. And here you have your wireless indicator and your charging indicator, and that's where you plug in the power. And we'll show you the power brick, which is very small. They give you a very long cord with it, but the power brick itself is fairly compact. Still slightly larger than the P's, which is the smallest thing I've ever seen, but it's certainly portable and not very heavy. Okay, so the Libretto has a dual-core 1.2 GHz Pentium CPU, that's the Intel U5400, it has 2 gigs of RAM, Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, Bluetooth 2.1 with EDR, it does not have a GPS, and it does not have 3G, though you can obviously use a phone tether with it or use a USB dongle for 3G access. Now we're going to take a look at some of the features of it. As you can see here, we have two screens running right now, and you can have windows that span the entire thing, or you can run different apps in different windows, and you can use Toshiba's utilities. So we're going to open up Firefox, and you can see here right now we're in single mode, and there are extra controls that Toshiba has added up here, one of which shoots the window down to the lower screen, and then you tap it to bring it back up again. And this one over here expands the window to take up the full length of the page. There's not much going down, going on down right here on the Firefox page, so we'll move to our own website so you can see that. 
Now I've enlarged the font size to make it easier to actually touch on menu items. That's one thing, when the screen is this small, Windows 7 has pretty good tablet features and it's reasonably friendly for touch. You have things like multi-touch, pinch and zooming, panning with your finger. But still, when the screen is this small, the text is quite readable, but it's hard to touch on menu items. So now you can see what it's like and we'll flatten it out. And you can actually scroll through just like that. And we'll tap up here on the menu bar, because you can see Toshiba has an overlay to make it easier, because they know, well, gee, this is not very easy to touch sometimes. So you've got a closed box up here, and then you've got resize things, drop it down, all that kind of good stuff. And move it up to just the top window, for example. All those features are there to make your life a little easier when using touch, because this does not work with a traditional stylus. Speed on this is great. We're going to take a look at Hulu soon, and Flash playback in general is just fine, and locally stored videos also play very well. But let's take a look at the Toshiba stuff. If you tap the keyboard button right here, you can see you get a virtual keyboard. Now there are actually six available. I find this one the easiest to type on. It gives you a little space between this and the Windows taskbar down here, so you don't accidentally hit icons and stuff. The next one expands the height a bit and gives you these keys in a more traditional location. That one's pretty usable. This one gives you a full keyboard with F keys and all that kind of thing. You're probably never going to touch type on something this small. I can touch type on the other keyboard pretty decently, but I'm used to using small devices. Next you've got a split keyboard here. It's interesting, if you're using this in portrait mode, then it automatically defaults to the split keyboard, and you have one part of the keyboard here and one part of the keyboard here on this, and we'll show you that later too. And then another variation, a straight split instead of the staggered ergonomic split. Lastly, there's a number pad. So that's the Toshiba keyboard. If you hit the home button, it just switches between the windows on the bottom, standard windows interface, and then Toshiba's Bolton board, which you might have seen if you've used other Toshiba laptops. Hit home again and you're back into full windows. So let's test out a little video playback. Okay, here we are in Hulu. I've used the virtual keyboard to enter the URL. The, the keyboard, by the way, has very nice haptic feedback. It's a real nice kind of scrubby feeling. It's, it's not one of those annoying, super vibrate things. And there's also auditory clicking. And you can control that. So we'll just pick a psych from the front page here. From Hulu. And this is just playing over our Wi-Fi network. This is definitely not a netbook experience. So this is 1024 by 600 pixels, and so is the lower display, which is the same as netbook resolution, all well, times two. In this case, video playback performance is fantastic. Makes you wish there was a VGA port on it, but there is not. And let's move that up to full screen. So you can hear that fan roaring. That's the only drawback. You really want to use headphones with this to drown out the fan. So that's kind of a sepia scene. You don't get to see as much of the color saturation there, but you get an idea that video playback is excellent. It's a pleasant display. Plenty of glare on these displays, unfortunately. It can make using the lower display in bright light difficult because you're catching the glare and not seeing it. But the display brightness is average, and the color saturation is, is very good on this. The device does have an accelerometer. It rotates in one direction only, which is kind of weird, but okay. Which is that direction. It takes several seconds for Windows to reorient itself. And we're putting it in this mode so we can show you Toshiba's eBook Reader, which is powered by Blio, a yet unreleased product that allows for interactive eBooks and the like. And Blio's performance is not so great. It does do the facing pages layout, but text is generally speaking too small to read. I, I prefer using Adobe Digital Editions and Kindle on this, honestly. 
Okay, so here we are in the Toshiba Books Place, which is really a Blio ebook reader. And you can see you get a nice facing pages here, but the text is too small. There is a zoom tool, but that will basically blow the, the pages off the screen, which isn't so great either. Now one of the problems with this is this is supposed to support PDF and EPUB, and PDFs, as you know, don't resize very well. Uh, they, you can't just change the font size, for example. You really have to enlarge everything, and this, this doesn't support EPUB at the moment. We've tried a bunch of DRM-free EPUBs, and it won't load any of them. So hopefully there'll be some updates to that, but thank God, meanwhile, for Kindle, Barnes & Noble Reader, and Adobe Digital Editions, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So here we are now in Adobe Digital Editions, which is an EPUB reader for DRM and DRM-free EPUB books. And this is my favorite way to use it, with two screens. It's still a you know, facing pages book experience. Why should it have to be in portrait mode? It can be in landscape mode and work quite well. So you can see here you've got facing pages, and there's a little hot spot that you can touch to turn pages with this, too. So that works quite well. Of course, you could put it in portrait mode and just read up in one narrow window if you wanted to. But as an ebook reader, certainly this works pretty well, and you get a lot of text on the page, and the font size is just fine. Of course, you can adjust your font size in Adobe Digital Editions as well as Kindle to suit you, but this is, this is very readable. Now we're going to take a look at Windows Media Player here and play a, a video that we have stored on our micro SD card. Not exactly the fastest medium, but nonetheless it should work just fine. Okay, we'll take that. Now we're playing a uh, very high 6,000 kbps HD video. You can see it handles it beautifully. It kind of looks like a portable DVD player and it functions like one, honestly. So again, not your typical netbook experience, and for the price, it cer should certainly be better than your typical netbook experience. So it's a full Windows 7 computer here. It comes with a MS Office 2010 Starter Edition. If you put in a product key, you can actually upgrade that to a full version of Office instead of the Starter Edition. It does everything that a Windows computer does. It's not limited in the way that the iPad is, obviously. So if you're looking for a really small computer on the go that's much more powerful than the average netbook or even the Sony VIOP in terms of horsepower, the libretto is it. Again, it's kind of a very unusual design. This is for you gadget lovers out there, and this probably is the future of computing. There are a lot more features to talk about, but we can't fit them all in this video, so please visit mobiletechreview.com to read our full review.